So Teresa is asking, please explain who is the woman on Revelation 12. My Catholic family thinks is the Virgin Mary. Thank you and God bless you. Hey, Teresa, this is a great question. And those of you in the chat, feel free to chime in about who you think it is and, and why. So let's turn to the verse. This is Revelation 12, starting at verse 1. And it reads, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red fiery dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadem on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled to the wilderness. There she has a place prepared, sorry, where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. So this is... Uh, Revelation 12 is kind of the center point of the book of Revelation, and this is one of the most pivotal prophecies. Uh, it very <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why it's a little bit tricky, but it's it's a very important one to know, and there's definitely ways to understand who this is. And sometimes I think people say this is only one answer, one, one this is it, nothing else. Uh, probably oversimplifying it a little bit, and I think it's definitely very clear where people will think Mary has a role in this. Like we go back and it's talking about a child and rule all nations caught up to God. This is clearly speaking of Jesus. And so when we're talking about a woman who's giving birth and gave birth to Jesus, there is part, there's some truth to that, that it is speaking of Mary, but I, we'll see how Mary was a part of it, but not really the whole big picture here. Uh, when we talk about a woman it's really talking about a, a greater woman that we all have a part of. And let's look to Genesis 3.15, because this language from Revelation is very much pulling from the Old Testament. And you cannot know Revelation until you know the rest of the Bible. I, I would, If I could teach a class on the Bible, I would teach using all the books except for Revelation, and then I'll leave Revelation as a final exam to prove uh, that you really know the Bible. That's how it works. Revelation isn't necessarily coming up with new imagery and new things. It's really pulling on and drawing on things that are largely there already in the Old Testament. And this concept of a woman, the woman is actually traceable to Genesis 3, chapter or verse 15. And it says, And I will put enmity between you, referring to the serpent, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he shall, the seed of the woman, shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So God's predicting early on, there's this woman, and out of this woman will come a child. And, you know, you could think, okay, is, this woman is speaking of is Mary, but really it's talking more about, let's say, a lineage of women a lineage of people through which the Messiah would one day come. And, uh, you know, we can see what Jesus says himself about, about Mary. Uh, we see Luke 11, starting at verse 27, it says, And it happened as he, Jesus, spoke these things, that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So those who hear the word and keep it. This is just such an interesting pivot, Jesus does, to take attention off of his mom and say, rather, look to the people who keep my word, uh, you know, hear it and keep it. We see similar language in Revelation. In fact, in Revelation 12. 
verse 17. It says, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we can say, oh, well, maybe Mary had lots of other kids, which is true. And, you know, Jesus had many siblings and maybe they just, you know, kept the commandments. But this language appears again and again throughout Revelation, speaking of God's people, especially he had a special group of end time people. But this is also now people of a different period. And Revelation 1, 3, it says, blessed is he who reads those. Sorry, sorry. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. So God is very much talking about, hey, there's going to be people who hear because usually the Bible would have been read back then. And we want you to keep these things. That's how, sorry, God wants us to keep these things. Then we go on to um, looking at examples throughout the Bible. The woman is always being used as a symbol for God's people. For example, Jeremiah 6, 2, it's, God says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Isaiah 54, 1, it, or sign at verse 1, it says, Sing, O barren woman, or sing, O barren you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains for you. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and, and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and, and your descendants will inherit the nations." Uh, and then if you keep going down, verse 5, it says, For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Uh, and then uh, verse 6 says, For the Lord has called you like a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when she were refused, says the Lord your God. So, And, and then if you think of uh, the book of... Uh, oh, why am I just blanking on it? I want to say Amos. It wasn't Amos. Uh, Haggai? No. Who was it, um, Tina, that married? God said, go and marry. Hosea. 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 <laughs> right. So, yeah, Hosea. Yeah, God said, I want you to go marry um, this prostitute. And I want your story to be an illustration, a living illustration to Israel of how my experience is with you, Israel. So uh, returning now to Revelation 21, it's a here. Here's just further proof within Revelation of who this woman is. So Revelation 21, verse nine, it says, then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So Jesus's wife says, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like Jasper stone, clear as crystal. And, and, you know, Ephesians uses similar language referring to God's people, God's, God's holy city, the new Jerusalem. Ephesians 5, 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that she might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water she by the might, word. He might sanctify and cleanse her? Yeah. You said she. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. And, you know, it's interesting just that a lot of the disciples throughout uh, the, the New Testament even start using the language of like a woman to refer to the church. For example, you look at 2 John 1. This is the same author of Revelation. He says, 2 John 1, the elder 
to the elected lady and her children to whom I love in truth and not only but also all those who I have who have known the truth so he says to the elect lady and her children so in a sense the the church corporately is the woman and then their true children would be like any of us God's people who have gone through conversion who have been born again you're born into the church and so she's the barren woman but has given birth to is has many children still and yes Christ was born into the Jewish people who were God's people at that time so Mary was sort of the literal fulfillment of it but the greater truer fulfillment was this is God's church we're talking about and God's church would end up going into exile. We see this um, prophesied many times. For example, in Matthew 24, 15 to 16, it says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads this, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Throughout history, e even during... Uh, the New Testament time, like uh, or medieval ages, God's people have always fled to wilderness areas to get away from persecution. That dragon, interesting, there's a lot that you could compare the dragon. Of course, it's talking about Satan on one level, but also who was his main power in government during the times of, of Revelation and then the time when it was written and then even later times it's very much time back to rome and rome used dragons very much in its symbol symbology and it had seven heads rome is is on seven seven mountains then we go to micah 4 uh, be in pain and labor to bring forth O daughter of zion, zion like a woman in birth pains so here God's talking about the, the Zion, got his like, Jerusalem, his people, you're like a woman in birth pains. For now you shall go forth from the city, you shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. There, sh there you shall be delivered. Interesting. You're saying you're going to go out, you're going to be in the wilderness, and you're going to have birth, referring to his people in general, or birth pains. Here's Peter, 1 Peter 5, 13, referring to, to the church again. It says, she who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark, my son. So during this time of persecution or, or you know, they're, they're in, um, I, I, I suspect that Babylon there, he could be talking about even like, he, those in Jerusalem, Jerusalem had fallen and become spiritually Babylon at that point. And she who is in Babylon, that church that's located there. Uh, then we go to the sun, moon, and stars. What are those? Malachi 4 2 says, But you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like like saw fed calves so this is referring to jesus and jesus is called the son of righteousness very much god is the greatest source of light in all of everything that there is and his righteousness is given to us second corinthians 5 2 for he who made him who knows knew no sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him so we have the ability to become righteous by taking on God's righteousness. So if God is light, righteousness can be compared to light. Um, putting on his clothes, his righteousness will that that's sort of how the church will be clothed with the sun. Matthew 13, 43, it says, Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then what about the moon? So we see Genesis 1, 16, it says, Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So the moon is a lesser light. The, the sun is a greater light. Is there a lesser light? Something that is also a bright light, but not quite the glory of God. 
well, we see in Psalm 119, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Bible very much is like this great source of light that we have. It's not, you know, as bright as God, you know, it's not like being in the presence of Jesus, but it's the next best thing we have. So what about the stars? Notice the women had 12 stars. The the stars probably represent God's people. You First, the number 12 in of itself is a sign referring to God's people. You have 12 disciples, the 12 tribes. You get down the list, 12 is very much signifying God's people. And then Matthew 5, 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It's interesting. Even that language of talking about a city, you know, God's people are the new Jerusalem. We are a city. We are that light of the world and we are to shine and just as the stars from our perspective are weaker lights compared to the sun and the moon we are lights but definitely still weaker light compared to god and then to the bible so not not a big mystery there's there is so much more that we could go into to even further prove that this woman really is the church not you know that church included mary but it goes far beyond talking about mary here that's a very narrow literal translation that then doesn't make sense especially when you try to figure out oh when was mary in the wilderness for 100 and you know for over a thousand days and all that when did that happen you don't have to worry about that because it really makes sense when we understand it's talking about the church in general so tina anything else you like that sorry that was a long answer <laughs> no worries just really quick you know um i i hear my friend here who's asking this question because i you know i have of family who's Catholic, and they've—I've heard this before as well—that you know this this is a depiction of Mary here. But um, when you look at the language used in the chapter in Revelation chapter twelve, go down to verse seventeen. It's pretty clear that this ties to the woman, basically that lineage, like you're talking about in Genesis chapter three, verse fifteen. Because in verse seventeen, it says the dragon, which you know, is the devil and Satan. Um, so him is wroth angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the faith of G or testimony of jesus christ and when you go to genesis 3 15 it's god you know at the beginning jesus says i will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed satan's seed and her seed so i mean it's pretty clear this is kind of going back to the beginning this is the beginning of the great controversy between christ and satan and that, you know, this is God's seed versus, you know, Satan's seed. And we're, and this is not the end yet. This is just the beginning of the end because this is now after coming of Christ. And now we're in a new era, you know, which is when John wrote this. This is just after Christ was crucified and resurrected. Now we're going to see God's church go into a time of persecution, which is exactly what happened. And so it's definitely not talking about, you know, Mary. And the thing with the book of Revelation, it is such a symbolic book. You can't, I mean, almost nothing in this is literal in the book of Revelation. Even the dragon, he's saying it, it's not a dragon like you're imagining. It's the devil. It's Satan. It's a sort, you know, he's actually giving you some clarity on this because everything in the, in the book of Revelation is quite symbolic. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this woman is definitely not Mary. I'm, <laughs> yeah, and, and then it even says that the dragon, the serpent of old. So so exactly. Where do we see serpent? It's the John is pointing us back to... Genesis 3 that we were just talking about. He's trying to connect those dots. Exactly. So yeah, definitely not Mary as much as, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Mary and, and what she did. I don't think I could have done what she did, but um, that's definitely not who is depicted here in the book of Revelation 12. So yeah. Mm -hmm.